Hello and welcome to another tutorial for the Horizon SDK. It's the third in the series and this time we'll cover how to build an AR application using Vivoria and implement the Horizon SDK. Earlier I covered the basics and ARKit. The field of AR is changing rapidly and so are the techniques. Vivoria hasn't been sitting idle either. It has transformed from being a specific tool for market-based AR into a more overlapping one making it easy for you as a developer to make AR apps regardless of the type of, your, of phone your users have. They call this Vuforia Fusion. Uh, if you want to know more about this, I recommend checking out their website. It basically means that Vuforia now knows whether a phone is capable of running ARKit or AR Core, and will use this for extended tracking. Or if it's not capable, it will switch to the own tracking implementation for the lower end phones. It still comes with a price tag of at least $500, so it might be worth checking out if it is a good fit for your use case. A development license, however, is free of charge, and you'll need one for this tutorial. Now let's begin. Okay, now let's create a new project first in Unity. Horizon uh, plus Euphoria. This one. And while it's creating that, we can go to uh, the Horizon website to get the Horizon SDK. That's at the de developer section. And here it is. There are two versions the Horizon SDK, that's the basic one without anything in it. And, uh, <laughs> well, the Horizon SDK is in it, of course, uh, but the sample project also includes Vuforia and ARKit sample scenes. What we'll do is we'll use the uh, basic version, um, so I can show you as well how the Vuforia um, SDK is connected to the Horizon SDK. So we have that now. Um, and you'll also need a Vuforia license key. And for that, you'll need to go to the Vuforia website, website. And um, they changed the site, but you now have to go to Vuforia engine. And then there's the dev portal. I'm already logged in, but if you don't have an account, you'll need to create one. And at the develop section, you can create a development key. So, uh, test. I acknowledge the terms and conditions. Yes, okay. This is your license key. And you also see a target manager section here. And um, if you want to use your own image targets or object targets or whatever, you can put them in here. You need to create a database first, uh, but the Horizon kit already comes with um, this marker image. So you know all of the Horizon users will already have this marker image, so you can use that one as well. And it's in the Horizon SDK. So you'll, you don't have to get it from uh, the Vuforia website. You can just uh, use the one that's in the SDK. You still need to use or to have a, a license, however. So. Okay, the project has been created. We can now import the Horizon SDK. Okay, like I said, um, the Horizon SDK already contains uh, the Horizon image target uh, database for Vuforia. However, it does not contain Vuforia yet, so we need to add this as well. And one thing we also have to do is change the build settings to iOS or Android. Of course, I'm building for iOS, so there we go. Now we can close, oh no, we need to go to the player settings. 
because we want to say that we are using Fuforia and it's in the XR settings. There you see Fuforia Augmented Reality supported. And this is the iOS version, but it's in Android as well. Now we can add a Fuforia AR camera to the scene. And it asks, it asks us if we want to import the Fuforia assets, which we want to do. One thing to note is that the AR camera has the Fuforia behavior script on there, which tells you if you are on the latest Fuforia version. Um, I see I'm not on the latest version, though I am on 7.2, so I'm not gonna bother upgrading now. And um, this world center mode, I always set to device tracking, but that's um, for your use case specific, so. And in the Fuforia configuration, you should import the license key. So let's go to the license manager. Copy this and paste it in here. Now, this has changed since I think 7.2 or 7.1. Um, for the Horizon SDK, um, you might want to disable the video background. I'm not gonna do this now. I'm gonna show you how to uh, disable the camera, which renders this background. Um, camera direction default. Yeah, okay. So this is all fine. Track device pose, tracking mode. If you say set this to positional, um, then it checks whether or not your phone is capable of running ARKit or ARCore and uses this for the extended tracking. And we don't want to disable the webcam because we want to use this as a testing device as well. Um, so we can test it in the editor. What we can do now is create a new image target. Um, because this is an image target. And sometimes, um, because Fuforia also um, imports the Fuforia Mars images database, it sometimes uh, puts it by default on this one. Um, you'll then need to switch over to the Horizon database uh, and it will automatically pick the correct um, version, like the Horizon Market Disk. And we can now add something to this image target. And this will show up once the camera or once the phone detects the image target. Um, let's make it a little bit smaller. So it sits on top of the image market, uh, image marker. And um, now we can Import the, oh, import the Horizon SDK. There's a prefab in here called Horizon. And we'll need to set this up for it to be able to work with Euphoria. But it's really easy. Um, you just need to select the tracking engines you use in your scene. In this case, it's Euphoria, only Euphoria. And we need to select the Euphoria transform and this transform is the one that Fuforia applies the uh, position and rotation on, which is in this case the AR camera object. So let's drag it in here. And then you'll notice it creates these uh, events as well on start horizon mode and on stop horizon mode when following Fuforia, uh, which we'll need to set here. And this means that when we start the horizon mode, uh, we've, we can do this with this button, then um, the camera on the AR camera object is disabled, which means we, uh, we are not rendering this camera anymore, which we want, because um, when we start the horizon mode, 
Um, we also want to go into stereoscopic mode and the stereoscopic object has its own cameras. This is the, for the left and the right eye. So. Um, that's all good. And as you might have noticed, this image target is quite small um, because we are using meters in this scene. And you, if you want to work with uh, larger scales, you can put this to whatever you like. I recommend then going into centimeters, for instance, uh, put this to 19.2. But then you need to tell the horizon object that you're using centimeters. Otherwise, the projection won't be correct. Okay. Now... Yeah, let's try this out. Hey, that's me. And what we need to do then is press start to start the horizon mode. Now the um, horizon prefab takes over and enables the UI overlay and disables this camera. Now, if we say stop, you see me again, and start, it's this. If we then go into landscape. Hey, there's a camera running. Ah, oh, there's still one camera. We need to delete this one. Let me stop. Delete this camera. Now let's do this all again. Hello. Start, go into landscape. Yes, now there's, <laughs> yeah, this is because I am on a MacBook and Unity doesn't like MacBooks. Yes, there we are. Okay, this is the reticle which you'll see um, in 3D in the Horizon headset uh, floating in front of you. And you'll notice the black background, which is good because black doesn't project. We can now um, stop this all and it will, will reset to portrait. Now, let's try out if it recognizes the marker. Yes, hello. And notice what happens when we go into horizon mode. It renders it twice for both images. Now you need uh, one way to start and stop the horizon mode in your application. You can do this, uh, this with a simple button. Um, Let's put it somewhere else though. No. So. We are working on creating a standardized button for the horizon mode. Just to make it more obvious for your users. Okay, this onClick method needs to connect to the horizon objects, um, the horizon tracking component, and then on the start horizon mode. And what it what we can say as well is on the horizon um, object you see these events and on start horizon mode we don't want to see this button anymore so we want to disable this canvas if false and when we stop we want to see it again so 
and game object set active true and the horizon um, UI like this button uh, is connected to the um, stop horizon mode so we can use that to go back and forth between these uh, these screens so if you now run this you have your basic 2D application when we then hit start horizon mode we go into horizon mode um, when we rotate the phone we go into this mode So, um, portrait again. Now that's the basics. We can now build this to the phone. And append. If you're on Android, you can just hit build and run. Of course, you'll need to set up the uh, Android. JDK, I think it's called, and you'll need to set up your phone so it's able to uh, accept your build. There it is. We can open up the Xcode project now. And build it to the phone. Yes, so this is your typical Fivoria application. It recognizes the target image and it projects the object on top of it. And when we now say, oh yeah, that's one more thing. Because of the new Fivoria, um, it knows this phone is capable of doing ARKit. And it now leaves the object in hanging in space and we're able to uh, well move away it doesn't recognize the marker image anymore but it stays in place which is nice uh, if we now hit start horizon mode horizon mode takes over and it tells us to place the phone in the headset which i'll do now and it goes into stereoscopic mode like so and the cube is already here floating in front of me so if we now recognize the marker again I see it now on top of the marker good now you know how to create an application using Unity, Fivoria and the Horizon SDK. Uh, I hope you've noticed it's not that hard to do. It doesn't require any coding at all. And if you do still have questions, you can put them on the forum, which is developer.horizon.com and we'll be there to answer your question as soon as possible. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, in the next video, I'll be doing one about AR Core and the Horizon SDK. And hope to see you there. Bye.